things I had to do on very many occasions was take things to the photocopy room. <laughs> and one day when I went to the photocopy room, uh, there was like this batch of photocopying that had already been done. And it was <laughs> brilliant, actually. It was um, someone from the Romance Languages had done this questionnaire, how to teach uh, English people who can't speak Spanish, Spanish. But instead of just like <coughs> randomly teaching them how to speak Spanish, she decided that she was going to teach them how to speak Spanish using only the language of love. Right? So I stole the questionnaire when the, when the photocopy people weren't looking, took the top one off, and I used her questions and I answered it in English. Um, so the questions in this belong to her and the answers are mine. And it's called a uh, questionnaire on foreign land. And just, for, just so you, as you listen to this, imagine that you're in a class, right? You've just walked in, the teacher gives you this questionnaire, you're with 20 people, and you're putting groups, and these are the questions you're supposed to answer in front of a bunch of complete strangers. Okay, just imagine. Do you remember the first time you fell in love? Yes, wordless, standing inside an ambassador's door sitting cross-legged on an American embassy floor. I saw two deer behind her eyes. I looked away. They told me they were galloping from London to Paris. When they got to France, they thought Paris would be right there. I waited until the deer returned. My voice was low. African, American, a whisperer, hyphens existed between continents and sounds. When you are attracted to someone, which of the following parts of the body catch your eye most? Ten corresponds to the most attractive feature, one to the least. Eyes, ten. Hair, ten. Neck, eight. Legs, six. Shoulders, seven. Back, eight. Teeth, one. Lips, nine. Chest slash breasts, seven. Seven, belly, six, feet, eight, hands, ten, skin, seven. <clears throat> what was the person like? Describe the physical features and personality. Inside hair, follicles, were songs about lions. Arms carried cowries away from the shore. I had to lean close to hear. I gave thanks for whispering. Hyphenated bodies united. We found the courage to enter the Atlantic and swim. If you are in love now, check the symptoms, symptoms you display. A jalopy becomes a transcendent chariot. Telephones become instruments of love. You leave the city to build a stone house in the wilderness. War feels distant. Time is concurrently urgent and unimportant. Tears become a tangible representation of God. Poverty feels simultaneously real and unreal. You can't eat. You discover a portal that leads to an unexplained alphabet. You can't sleep. I circled them all. Similes. Love is like an element of nature. Snow. A ge geographical area, a canyon, a season of the year, autumn, food or drink, watermelon juice, furniture, a chest of drawers, an animal, a seahorse, a plant, a vine. Use your ideas to create a love poem. If you expressed your feelings, how do you do so? If not, why not? I did not. I could not. Ghanaian gold adorned one finger. Some enchanted evening was experience, not song. But my telephone kept making me dial the number. When my phone rang, I counted the rings before I picked up. When love happens, cut watermelon into a canyon of snow, melt red, collect it in drawers, in autumnal chests. Sea horses weave umbilical vines, a botanical net with port. We traveled across borders, lines, angles, curves. We studied the geometry of our needs. Hit bone to hit bone. 
Your backpack is armor. You're alone in New York. Your fingers lope along city blocks, drawn on the map held away from your chest. Your passport to an independent life. Your hand on your hip and one raised eyebrow adds inches to your height. When a stranger stops to offer help, you look him in the eye. No, thanks, I know exactly where I'm going. Combat boots steering you to the New York Public Library. Inside the stacks, you contemplate supermarkets, how the conformity of cans increases your appetite to read. You snake through hardbacks, philosophy, astronomy, geography, history, Egypt beckons. Once her monarch, now your name remains. Was the memory of you in your kitchen of copper, sipping rose water, a fantasy? Did you really ask your American guest, how do you live alone in a city? If I'm without family for five minutes, I panic. I hate it. Now you breeze down library steps without relatives, your city panorama mapped in numbers and letters, grids that embrace the pyramid of books under your arms. You repeat the mantra you've invented, each crack in the pavement, the prospect of a story, each clash with a stranger, a trip closer to myself. Your newly pierced nose has restored your status of royalty. You've tattooed the word freedom from hip bone to hip bone, permanently marking you as a surveyor of subways. Your hair is thick clover, your fingernails shovels, digging for God beneath tunnels and cement. But nothing, not even a root, offers you its flesh. You suck on the steps before a clump of urban anthropologists. You slick back your bangs and zip your butt backpack. This, you say, holding up a self-portrait. This is the history I want to display at the museum of people who no longer live the lives their families demand. And this, you say, one arm outstretched to Harlem, the other to Brooklyn. This is my city, home to the person I've come here to be.